Welcome back, everyone. Buckle up, because this deep dive is going to be a wild ride, even for us. We're tackling the Ferrari F80, a car that, for a while there, seemed about as real as a unicorn on a skateboard. Ah, ah yes, the mythical F80. Those early rumors definitely sent the internet into overdrive. You're telling me, I mean, some of those specs felt like we were getting a sneak peek at the world's most exclusive physics experiment not a car. A bit of carefully orchestrated hype never hurts when you're Ferrari, right? <laughs> but in this case, the reality actually manages to outdo the rumors. No kidding. We're talking 1,200 horsepower. Even for someone like me who enjoys a bit of spirited driving, that number? Well, it takes your breath away. 1,200 horsepower. It's a figure that commands attention, no doubt, but it's important to remember this isn't just about brute force. So help me wrap my head around this. What does that kind of power actually feel like translate to on the road? I mean, does the asphalt just melt beneath the tires? Imagine this. You're at a standstill. The light turns green. And in the time it takes you to say Ferrari F80, you're already rocketing towards 200 kilometers per hour. Okay, now you're just messing with me. You're telling me this thing teleports. I assure you the physics of this car are very real and very impressive. But beyond the raw acceleration, it's the control that's truly remarkable. And that's where the hybrid system comes in, right? This is where the F80 gets really interesting. You hit the nail on the head. We're not just talking about a monstrous gas engine here, though it does have that. We're talking about a 900 horsepower gas engine working in tandem with a 300 horsepower electric motor. So it's got brains and brawn. That's quite the power couple. Precisely. And this isn't some afterthought hybrid system slapped on for efficiency. This system is directly descended from Ferrari's experience with the 499P. The 499P, that's their Le Mans winning race car, right? The very same. It's all about efficiency and power delivery on the track. And Ferrari took those learnings, refined them, and adapted them for the road in the F80. So what you're saying is this road car has the heart of a champion. Let's just say it wouldn't look at a place on the racetrack. All right, you've officially kicked my curiosity. <laughs> Let's pop the hood, so to speak, and dive into the tech behind this beast. All right, so we're talking about a car with a racing pedigree, but when I see terms like S-duct and active rear wing, I mean, is this thing even street legal? Street legal? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> But it's definitely borrowing from the aerospace playbook. Okay, good to know. I won't get pulled over for violating any aircraft regulations. But seriously, what are we talking about here? What is an S-duct, and why does it sound like something out of a spy movie? Well, the name actually comes from the shape. Mm -hmm. Basically, the air intake, it's up front, right? But then instead of just flowing over the hood, it's channeled through this S-shaped path inside the nose of the car. So they're routing the air through a maze before unleashing it back onto the world. I'm intrigued, but why bother? Downforce, my friend. Remember we mentioned that 10 to 50 kilograms of downforce? Yeah, the thing that's supposed to keep this car from taking flight. Exactly. And this S-duct, it's a key player in achieving that. By carefully controlling how the air flows around the car, it creates this force that pushes the car down onto the road, especially when you're pushing the speed limit. So it's like the car is using the air itself to hug the road tighter. Precisely. Manipulating physics to squeeze every ounce of performance out of the design. Mm -hmm. And the S-duct is just one part of the aerodynamic puzzle. Don't forget about the active rear wing. Right. The active rear wing. Does it like flap around or something? I'm picturing a robotic bird back there. Not quite that dramatic. It's more like imagine the wing changing its angle and shape depending on how fast you're going and what kind of corner you're taking. So it's like the car has different personalities. A calm, collected wing for cruising down the highway and then <gasps> bam. Full attack mode for when you really want to push it. That's a great way to put it. High downforce for when you need grip in the corners. Low drag for when you want to hit those top speeds on the streets. It's constantly adapting to give you the optimal performance. It's like having a co-pilot who's constantly fine-tuning the car based on your every move. Now you're getting it. But with all that power, we got to talk about heat. Oh, yeah. That's a lot of horses. Yeah. How do they keep this thing cool? Well, that's where things get really interesting. Ferrari. They looked to the skies for this one. What do you mean? Airplanes. Airplanes, okay. Yeah, they incorporated design elements inspired by airplanes to help manage the heat. So we're not just talking about a bigger radiator here. No, no, no. We're talking about airflow. Have you ever noticed those little vents you see on airplane wings? You mean like the, I don't even know what they're called, like the little... They're called nasty intakes. Yes. Like, almost like someone cut a little fin out of the wing. That's exactly what they are. The F-80 has them. They're shaped just like that, placed very strategically to use the air itself to pull heat away. 
That's wild. So they're using the air to like suck the heat away. Exactly. It's yeah. like a like a bird or something. Exactly. That's incredible. It's biomimicry at its finest. I love it. So it's like they thought of everything right down to the smallest detail. And we haven't even touched on the CCMR Plus braking system. Oh, right. That was another one of those terms. Sounded like something you'd find on a spaceship, not a car. Well, it's pretty high tech, even for Ferrari. We're talking specially designed carbon ceramic brake discs. Incredibly strong, incredibly resistant to heat, essential when you have this much power on tap. Yeah, I bet stopping is just as important as going fast when you're dealing with this kind of performance. But let's shift gears a little bit here and talk about this hybrid system. It's got everyone talking, but is it really all it's cracked up to be? Oh, it's not just hype. Remember how we were talking about the F80's racing lineage? This hybrid system, it's got Formula One DNA woven right in. Ferrari took their expertise from the track and translated it to the road. And this electric motor, it's not just for show, is it? No way. This thing means business. It works seamlessly with a gas engine, providing an extra kick of power precisely when you need it most. And because it's electric, that power, it's instantaneous. Zero lag. So you're saying it's like having an extra shot of espresso for the car whenever you hit the gas. Exactly. But it's not just about raw power. The hybrid system also brings fuel efficiency into the equation, not to mention lower emissions. Ah, so a supercar with a conscience. I like it. It's the way of the future. Performance and responsibility no longer at odds. But enough about the engine. Let's talk about what it's like to actually sit behind the wheel of this beast. All right, we've popped the hood on the F80's tech, and wow, that's a lot to process. But at the end of the day, it's about the experience behind the wheel, right? So sure. spill the beans. What's it like? Do you feel like a race car driver, a pilot, a time traveler? It's a sensory overload in the best possible way. Ferrari calls the cabin design One Plus Lake, and it really is all about the driver. Everything is centered around you. One plus, so the plus one better pack light. Huh. Well, there's not a ton of extra space, that's for sure. But seriously, think fighter jet meets luxury sports car. Every detail is about minimizing distractions and maximizing that connection between driver and machine. Music to my ears. Though knowing my lead foot, maybe they should pipe in some relaxing spa music too, just to balance things out. What about the steering wheel? Any surprises there? They've definitely streamlined it, smaller, sportier, more intuitive. And here's something interesting, the F80 steering wheel design, it's actually going to be in future Ferrari road cars. Ah, so they're using this as a test bed. Smart move. But speaking of testing the limits of what fits in a supercar, I got to ask, did they manage to squeeze in a cup holder anywhere? You'd be surprised. While a cappuccino might be pushing it, they did include something practically unheard of in a car like this luggage space. Wait, hold on. You're telling me the Ferrari F80, this aerodynamic marvel with a hybrid engine that could power a small city, has luggage space. It's true. They managed to fit in enough room for a 24-hour suitcase. Okay, so maybe not a grocery run, but still impressive. Yeah. It sounds like they really were going for a balance, pushing the limits of performance, while still acknowledging that, well, sometimes you need to bring a toothbrush along for the ride. Exactly. It's crazy. Talk about attention to detail. It's insane. So what about the suspension? Could be your average setup with all that power on tap. You'd be right about that. They took the active suspension system from the Ferrari Purisang. Now remind me, the Purisang, that's their... That's their off-road beast. Off-road. They took off-road suspension technology. They adapted it. And they put it on their supercar. They did. That's wild. What made them think to do that? Well, imagine this. You're carving through these turns on a track, pushing the F80 hard, and the active suspension is adjusting the damping and the height of each wheel on the fly to keep the car perfectly balanced, no matter how aggressively you're driving. So it's not just about making it stiff and responsive. It's about finding that perfect balance between raw performance and actual drivability. You got it. And it speaks to the bigger picture here. The F80 it has this incredible hybrid powertrain, aerodynamics borrowed from fighter jets, a cockpit that feels ripped from the future, but it's still undeniably a Ferrari. That's the magic trick, isn't it? Blending those cutting edge elements with the soul of a Ferrari. How do you even begin to capture that? You're right. It's more than just the sum of its parts. The design, it pays homage to icons like the F40, but there's no mistaking this for anything but a bold leap forward. It's about pushing boundaries while staying true to that Ferrari heritage. It's a statement 
A testament to what's possible when you combine passion, engineering, and a little bit of that Italian flair. Couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah. We've thrown a lot of stats and figures at you today, but at the end of the day, it comes down to this. How does it make you feel? And that, my friends, is a question that can only be answered from behind the wheel. A huge thanks to our expert for breaking down the F80 for us. It's been quite the ride. And also, head over to the comment stream below and let us know your thoughts on the Ferrari F80. But if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to support this channel with the YouTube algorithm.